Uh, it's always good to see you here, Tim Senor. You know, it's been a quiet week so far to kick off this week of Alien UFO slash news. But there's a lot that we could go over tonight just to kind of refresh and review a lot of things, including the SCU. But first, how you been doing, buddy? Oh, I've been doing really well. Thanks a lot for asking, Dave. Uh, just family stuff, keeping healthy, and uh, enjoying a little downtime. So how about yourself? You know what? I find myself in a state of flux right now. I really do. In regards to UFOs, you know, and I was thinking about this because, you know, I'm a gym rat now. Uh, you know, I go there. <laughs> Pumping weights, pumping the iron, yeah. you know, so to speak, you know, trying to shed some uh, ungodly weight that I've uh, allowed myself to. We all know this too. You are looking fantastic. Keep it up. You know what? I feel better. Yeah, I do. You can tell. I do feel better. You know, you, you know, the one thing that I've noticed, I, I don't cough as much anymore. I was going to say you're breathing. That's the first thing I know. I'm breathing. Yeah. I'm breathing. And your nose. Right, everything a little better. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not feeling very good today. Oh, okay, you know, I'm not feeling very good today, and I, I think I got a little bit of a bug that I'm going to be able to shake here pretty quick. It's going around, but yeah, yeah. I know. My but I, 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 I'm still in a in a state of flux here. Okay, yeah. regarding UFOs because. You know, I love this subject. I'm passionate about this subject, Tim. Okay. And it just seems, you know, as an experiencer, I'm not in this business talking about all this stuff because I want to. I'm here because I have to. And I mean that with all due respect to myself and our audience and everything. I have to because I need to figure out what's happened to me over the last 11 years. Okay. And... You know, coming up on December 13th, it'll be 11 years official for me in my weird experiences kicking off and wow. getting it going into full, full gear. And long story short, okay, I had no aspirations to do a radio show. I had no aspirations to, to build what we've called this little mini empire of spaced out radio, you know, where we have you know, seven to six or seven terrestrial radio stations. Now, you know, we have our digital networks, podcasts, you know, you know, we get, you know, 60, 70,000 downloads per month Wow, on this show. I mean, it's incredible. That's not a lot compared to others, but for us, it is a lot. Yeah. It's, and, yeah. and, you know, the point that I'm getting at is this, Tim is, when somebody in a position and as and, and as involved in the UFO world as I am cannot figure out who to side with, who to who who's telling the truth, who's not telling the truth, where where are we getting the right story from these days? It really brings a solemn attitude towards what we are doing because I find myself becoming very, very, I don't want to say negative. It's because that's not the term, but very aloof. I will say regarding UFOs. It's like every time we turn what we've already told our audience, we're having to give them. And I told you so, you know what I'm saying? And I mm -hmm. just, I can't stand that about this field where they're not about answers. Disclosure is not about answers. It's about cover up. Co they don't want to admit that there's a confirmation going on, which there is, you know, I mean, anybody who films anything and you're a filmmaker, you're, you're a guy who's going out uh, trying to catch uh, videos of unidentified objects in the sky. Y you know, how do we believe that anymore? I believe it because you're my friend. You're not going to pull the wool over my eyes, but there's going to be people out there, Tim, who say, Oh, all you caught was satellites. All you caught was Starlink. All you caught was this, you know, because all they see is a bunch of dots. You know, I mean, I just don't know where we are expected to go 
with this field anymore. The cover-up is real. The battle for control is real. They don't want to give us the truth. And when we think we're close to the truth, something gets pulled from under our feet again. And, you know, Monica here in the chat room says, Dave, I feel you. It's exhausting. She's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. This is an exhausting topic because we end up going around in circles. But realistically, Tim, that's all we can do when that's all the information that is provided. And yeah. this cover up goes way deeper than people think. It's more than Roswell. It's fast forwarding to the times when we're going to be sending humans to the moon and humans to Mars. This is where we're getting to people. And it's, it's scary, Tim. And I don't know where to turn. Well, for me, it's really refreshing to hear you say that because this topic strangely has a really strange way of leveling the play field for everybody. So you have 11 years of experience with deep knowledge and understanding a lot of it insider knowledge. And here am I fresh into it three years and we're right in the same place, buddy. Um, and it's just simply because you don't know where to seek out that truth. And it's such a muddled field that every day there's more information on it, it makes it harder to find the truth in there somewhere. And um, recently, Tim Burchett had a great interview where he talks about this exact thing, where even for people in Congress, they're struggling for that same information, not just us regular Joes looking for it on YouTube. But you bring up a really great point that you're feeling in flux where, you know, you don't know where to turn. You don't even have a, a feeling of where things are going to go, where you usually do. Um, I think that says a lot. You know, is that the success that you're feeling right now? That's the success of them waiting this topic out with you in particular and potentially with each individual in your chat and the whole um, people that read this when it's in the media, are they just waiting us out? We feel in flux, I think, like you're saying, because of that lack of solid um, information. They're making commitments and then not following through. Tim Burchette has meetings with people in the know and then they cancel. Seems like there's a huge withdrawal happening. And so perhaps that's the flux. It's the out portion, you know, of the ebb and flow right now that we always talk about with information. You know, I think we're poised for disinformation and we should be careful. Again, we're around election time too. So. Well, I understand that, but I mean, all the time, Tim, you, you get approached, I get approached by good people saying, what is the truth? What is the truth? And that, and that's the problem that we have here. How do we, as journalists, as radio show hosts, as commentators of this subject, how do we tell our audience what is the truth? Yeah. Well, I think you can start out by saying what we know definitively, which is there's been an obvious cover up for 75 years. Um, you can point people in the direction of films and documentaries that you yourself have even worked on um, to show distinctly how NASA has particularly covered this topic up in some aspects. You can point to great articles written by people like Daniel Otis, who are really, you know, they have their finger pretty much on the pulse of truth. And so, right. Let me just pause right there. Cause you mentioned Daniel Otis. Please. We originally had him scheduled for a few nights from now to come on. This is a CTV and vice reporter who's yeah. been covering the story uh, with excellence up here in Canada, but uh, he had to uh, reschedule with us and taking his place uh, this coming Thursday will be Homer Hickam. And if you don't know who Homer Hickam is, you might remember the uh, 90s movie October Sky uh, starring Tobey Maguire, where a bunch of buddies got together to launch rockets and uh, launch them into the sky. That's the Homer Hickam we're talking about. And, um, wow. and we're going to be talking about going back to the moon, NASA, rockets, Mars, aliens. We're going to get into it all with him 
on Thursday. So I just want to make that point since you brought up Daniel Otis. Sorry for cutting you off there. No, no, that's great. And a quick shout out and hello to Jim Goodall in your chat. I just saw him. So a big wave and hello to him. Hello, sir. And yeah, so what a legend. What a legend. It's always I have to say, him. I have to say that every time Jim Goodall comes into our chat room. What a legend. Indeed. This is a guy. Okay. True story. This is a guy, and I don't even know if you know this one, Tim. He flew inside the cockpit of an SR-71 while it was flying inside a C-5 galaxy being transported. I didn't know that. How is that possible? Well, the, they took the wings off, and this, the they put the the body of the SR-71 inside the inside the C-5 galaxy. The galaxy's mm -hmm. at altitude, and Jim okay. hopped into the cockpit of the SR-71. Wow. So technically, he was flying a Blackbird. Okay. Well, or, like it was it. an A-12. Pardon me. It was an A-12. Thank you, Jim. Technically, so, he flew an, so cool an A-12. Here. I love that. I know. To inside a C-5 galaxy. Yeah, he's amazing, and... You just got to put the quarter in the slot with Jim and then just sit back and enjoy. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's and and you know, to all, to all our fans out there, Jim will be one of our special guests at our Las Vegas party, May 19th through 21st at yes. the golden nugget in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's our second annual fan party. And uh, we're going to be uh, putting more information up here very quickly because we want as many audience members to come on in and join us there uh tickets for that weekend get this how much tickets are we we've scheduled the prices tim for it's a weekend of hanging out with us oh a couple of grand no 60 bucks what oh and if you God. want and, and if you want a vip package it's a hundred oh come on everyone can do that that's amazing yeah wow Cool. Yeah. 60 Good bucks to hang to hang out with us for the entire weekend. Or if you want a VIP package, which will come with some a swag bag, it's a hundred bucks. Dude, I, I don't know. Awesome. I don't know where you're gonna you're gonna get that much people uh together. Last year we had 60 some people and we had some incredible incredible guests like Jim and I know Jim will probably bring uh, uh his protege Michael Schratt with him. We know Merle is coming. We know uh, Lori and Fenton is going to be there and, and Melinda Leslie and, and Misha Johnson and, and a number of other people who've been on this show. Uh, the Sasquatch boys of uh, Nate and uh, Corey. Uh, I call them Nate foot and Hallmark mm -hmm. from Wibbs and uh, Carter Bouchard is going to be there. Bigfoot, Michigan, oh, Rob. Okay. We're, we're going to be having a great, great time. And uh, we want everybody to get on in there and we'll give more details coming up here in the next couple of weeks. Awesome. I'll definitely be yeah. there with my crew. It's going to be so much fun. I can't wait. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. You, if you want to uh, go now and put your reservation in, uh, just go to email us at info at spaced out radio.com. That's info at spacedoutradio.com. Let us know what package you want, if you just want a regular package or a VIP. And then uh, what you want to do is uh, uh, just put your name on the list for right now, and then we'll get back to you to confirm everything. Man, I, yeah. you know, I, I know we've got to get through Christmas first, okay? But I am pumped for Vegas this year, man. I am fun. pumped to get back there. And uh, we're going we're gonna, to uh, do some real special stuff. Uh, for our people and our uh, and our guests yeah. for that night and our uh, VIPs and everybody like that. So uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of fun hanging out. And uh, I look forward to it very much. Look forward to it. Me too. And I'll be bringing all my toys and my gear. So if people want to take a look at some Gen 3 night vision and take a look at what radar looks like, we're going to try and bring all the mobile versions of all of that stuff. So people Well, that'll go out. good. That'll be that'll go good because we are planning Tim on the Sunday night. We are planning on on actually uh doing a skywatch outside of Vegas. 
Yes. And so I know Misha Johnson and Melinda Leslie want to do one. Yeah. And if, if you got the motor home there, Hey, that's, that'll be a, that'll be a part of the fun for, by the way, that's included in the cost. That's included in that's the amazing. cost. Yeah. A night watch yeah. is amazing to do with Melinda Leslie period. That's the reason to go right there. Absolutely. That's very cool. And Jim will be bringing some books. So people that are looking for signed Jim, Jim, good old books. I know I will. I'm, I'm going to bring the few I have. Maybe he'll have some extras. So that's excellent. Well, we got to get him autographed. Got to get him autographed. I mean, Jim is, uh, Jim good all there. There's not enough good words on this planet to describe the legendary status of, of Jim Goodall and the quality human being he is. And he's a real, he's a real bright spot for our, uh, for our field and, uh, and flight and space travel and secret space programs and secret flights and area 51 and stealth programs. He is the brains of it all. He really is. Tim, when we come back from the break, we're going to get back into the UFO world because the SCU, the Scientific Coalition for UAP Studies, came out a big report here. And we're going to talk about that and what it's all about. Could the SCU take a real lead in disclosure? Here's how they'll do it when we talk next. Ob Flett's already pumped up for Vegas. You got to see Ob Flett. He's a monster, man. He is an absolute monster. Big cool. dude. Big awesome. dude. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I got to sit in on uh, the Ocean's Deep Woo. She had a live show. Got to meet her. Very, very interesting oh, yeah? live show. Yeah. She's out in your chat there. I have chat on tonight, everyone. So feel free to. Put questions in caps, I guess, if you've got something, you know, we could hit, keep it on topic, I guess. Dave likes that. But, um, yeah, Dave, it's so good to see you, buddy. Look at that smiling is, face. Man. You're, you're, yeah, you've you got can, some you energy. You've got energy yeah. tonight. Oh, dude, I, I, you know what? I'll tell you what, what did it for me was I woke up really groggy. I went to bed at like 10 o'clock last night. And I woke up really groggy hmm. this morning. And, you know, I took my, you know, usually when I wake up groggy, uh, I, I get ready. I, I take my son to the bus stop. And because it's cold outside, you usually get that that cold hit of air. And it wakes you up real quick. Oh, yeah. Well, it didn't, it didn't do that. Hmm. Maybe you're depleted. And, you might be depleted I, or something. I went, I went to the shower, you know, and I hop in the shower uh this morning and i brush my teeth in the shower i know weird for some people that's weird i just enjoy doing it there <laughs> and i and i hit that spot on my throat twice with the gag reflex oh and you know i had my mini wheats for breakfast and the next thing you know i'm puking in the shower what? you know and right from there man Right from there, I have felt like crap all day. Been having puke burps right up until like huh. minutes ago. Wow. And and uh, I'll tell you, it was, uh, it's weird, man. I just a don't feel a hundred, don't feel a hundred percent. Yeah. Not well, whatever, 100%. whatever this lurgy is that's going around right now, we, both of my little ones are not feeling great and it's it is that kind it's the it's the upchuck kind which is no fun oh, so i hope and, you're, you gotta, re and you gotta realize man i am such a wimp and a baby when i puke oh really like, you I, hate it? I am the i am the biggest baby i'm crying my eyes out oh. you know and all this kind of stuff i cannot handle puking yeah i hate puking yeah that sucks i i kind of like I had a stomach thing for a while as a young man. And then it, um, I, I had a procedure, so I don't have it anymore, but I got really good at throwing up. It was just like a, bah! and then fine. Oh, <laughs> I could probably me, thrown up between classes and no one would have known. Oh, but not uh, me, man. 
It's not I, fun. I, yeah. No, it's it's not fun at all, and I don't appreciate it. And uh, I hope you get a, over it. Not quickly. a fan of it. Yeah, I'm sure after a good sleep tonight, I'll be okay. But uh, um, this the way it is. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. What do you do? Well, it is kind of that time of year. And are your little ones in school? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah so they could be bringing home the same sort of stuff my little ones are. Yeah. Yep. No fun. Oh, look so, at Jim Goodall blaming me. He's down at even my rescue, <laughs> German Shepherd Scarlet, barfed three times this afternoon. It's all your fault. Oh, thanks, it's going Jimmy. around. Even Jimmy's dogs are not feeling well. Bummer. Mm-hmm. Huh. Yeah. Leave it. Leave it all to me and blame me. Oh my gosh. Oh, the the unknown is throwing me some real compliments here. Look at that. You're still young, Tim. Twenty nine. Buy this yeah, guy a plus, case of beer. Plus forty. Yeah. Tim, I, I'm fifty two. Fifty two. Yeah, you're old. I had to you're think old. about it. I was born in 1970. I like to just count backwards from that. Yeah, you're old. <laughs> he knew. He's he's laughing. Yeah. Uh, a little gray and nothing going on up here. So. Well, I'm getting my hair cut Thursday. Get my oh yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, you're keeping it. You're keeping it tight. You yeah, got the yeah. I I got mean, a tr- it looks great. You get the, get the tr- beard trimmed up. Nice. Uh, you know. Hey, I want to say a big thank you to Cat Chaser, Kira, Surf Jair, Deb, Thomas, Samantha, Tim, Stephen, and Typical Skeptic for the Super Chats tonight. It's a wonderful way to support what we do on this show on a nightly basis. So thank you so much for your love and support. Here we go with the final half hour, everyone. We're taking Tim to the top. We rounded third. We're heading for home tonight on Space Down Radio. Thank you so much for the love. My name is Dave Scott. Very much appreciate earning your listening ears wherever you are on this beautiful planet we call Earth. Hello to everyone listening in on our terrestrial affiliates around North America, digitally on Odyssey Radio, Talk Stream Live at KPNL. All of our archives are free. Join us at youtube.com forward slash Space Down Radio. Do old Davey the favor, hit that subscribe button. And our website, spacedoutradio.com. We have a plethora of features for you. Rock out to Bumblefoot, read Shirky Poo's Newswire, check out our swag as well. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio, Instagram, Spaced Out Radio Show, and on TikTok at Spaced Out Radio. Tim Senor is here with the UFO report. We're going to get into the SCU, but first, Tim, I got to I gotta give a shout out to our listeners here. We're at 19,502 subscribers on YouTube. Wow. 498 away. You know, I don't ask for a lot, okay? <laughs> but I really, really want to hit 20,000 <laughs> subscribers before the end of 2022. That was my goal at the beginning of the year, and we are like right there. We're right there. So if you haven't already gone to our YouTube channel, okay, to check out our archives or listen to the live show and be in the chat room or whatever, we'd appreciate it if you went on over to our our, uh, website or to our YouTube channel, Spaced Out Radio, and hit subscribe. It really means a lot to hit 20,000 because YouTube value – you have different jump rooms. You have, you know, your first your first hit is 1,000, and then it takes you forever to get to 10,000, depending on your channel, the majority of them. And then once you hit 10,000, your next goal is 20. And But from 20 to 50, it hits the algorithms different, and apparently the numbers just start to ride on in from there. So yeah. I'm curious to see if that actually works. Yeah. You deserve a wide audience. You've got a really great show. Your guests are so diverse. 
your audience gets a taste of everything in the paranormal. It's an incredible show and you've worked really hard on it. And so you deserve as much success as you get, bud. You really do. This is your blood, sweat, and tears we're seeing. So trying. We're trying. Yeah, yeah it's great stuff. We're oh, yeah. Anyways, tell us what happened with the SCU, the Scientific Coalition of UAP Studies. Indeed. So they had a presentation and uh, they released uh, their first wave of data and they released a bunch of videos from that live event to YouTube in a succession, I believe, of maybe half a dozen videos about an hour and a half long each. And so you can go to SCU and find all of those videos, which stands for the Scientific Coalition for Unidentified Aerospace Phenomenon. And uh, they're pretty specific on that. And so it's, it's great. And so Richard Hoffman is the chair and he presents and um, they have a few speakers that are coming in via web. But um, basically, it was a presentation of their first wave of findings. Some of it included in the film by Carolyn Corey and UAPX. So some of their results are also included in there. Um, but it is basically a brief on how they go about their process. And then the fact that they have something like 160 scientists that work in this coalition. So it's not just a small group of people working on this and they work on a diverse group uh, um, or a diverse array of topics within this um, phenomenon. So for example, um, and we can go through it and I would love to kind of brief um, some of the slides that I did keep and some of the notes that I took, but for example, they have it broken up into divisions where groups of researchers will do certain projects and they can elect to be on certain projects. And in fact, they're even asking for people that are interested to come and donate time to help research some of this stuff so we can all get involved. But um, they do things like um, research a military base and all the sightings that are affiliated with that location. And then they'll collate as much data as they can on that and present it. And so the groups will each pick a different area and they all kind of collate that information as a group together. And then they can kind of read what is considered a hotspot and what isn't, whether it had nuclear devices or it didn't, whether the public reported it or it was a military report. And so they're starting to kind of refine things that way. And so a lot of their research is done via armchair, if you will. But a lot of it is also conducting um deep dives into already existing information on events if you will and i'm not sure if i'm being totally clear on that but um if you like we can kind of go over what their releases were but what sure. was your what was your general opinion um you know just kind of like a wide stroke hearing this as being an independent public um resource Hear my sigh. I understand. There's nothing new. In my opinion, I think the direction and the directive of the SEU is completely wrong. I think that they have an opportunity with the absolutely brilliant minds that they have to be putting forward more than what they are doing. For a long time, the SCU wanted to be kind of like the, the quiet, hidden group of scientists where, you know, almost like a, almost like a cult where you, nobody knows the names of the members, but we know the organization is out there. But it's been the last couple of years where they've really stepped up. And I know a couple people very closely on the board of directors that I speak with uh, on this. And I've, and I've mentioned that to them. I think that the pro biggest problem that they have is that they are going after the exact same thing as what the government wants and, and what the military wants. And, we're not seeing that. And it's not just about the data of dots and speed and, and convergence and, and the technology, 
is this is a subject that goes well beyond that. So what exactly are they looking for? What is their mantra? You know, I, I don't think they have a primary directive that they could honestly come out and say, now I could be wrong about that. I might be being a little bit critical. Okay. I also know they don't have a proper media person to get the information out. The media person they use is someone who's never worked in media before. And he doesn't know how to get press releases out. The SCU, the minute the To the Stars Academy came out in 2017, the SCU should have been right there opening their mouths, opening, uh, getting on the press with everything. And they haven't done it. They haven't done it. So I'm, I'm a little skeptical of what their directive is because, you know, I hear so many different things and I think there's a lot of potential of what they could do to prop up the UFO world, but they're waste, in my opinion, they're wasting all of these scientists for nothing. Well, I am completely not surprised by your position because you and I are totally always kind of um, left and right on this. And so, um, you know, I can speak for them and, and in this, you know, they are, they have a very clear objective. Um, you know, they have gone very methodically about this in order to not only put this organization together, but to get funding. So um, go ahead. Let me, let me ask you this. If they have a clear objective, okay, why is it not public? Oh, it why is. Why have they not? Yeah, but putting it on a website does nothing. Does nothing, Tim. We've got stuff on our website that I know listeners of ours have never been to our website. Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm saying. The SCU has the power to be the number one voice of reason, not political, not governmental but strictly scientific regarding the unidentified aerial phenomena. Yeah. And they haven't done it. And I've talked to, I, I've talked to one of the board members on this. Yeah. About this on how they have dropped the ball due to their media person who seems to get everything he wants in the UFO world. Okay. I'm sorry. I have a real problem with people who claim to be journalists and have never worked a day in journalism. Right. All right. So, and, and if I, yeah. And if I may just briefly rebut, so um, they just briefed Congress. That's massive. Um, so, you, you know, UAPX, which is a division. And then let's consider this. Um, so I personally consider them a resource for any of my data. Anything yes. I consider interesting, I can run it by them. But again, I'm a nuts and bolts guy in the same field as them. But um, I think perhaps you're, you, ha you are going to start seeing some change because this is a very young SCU you're seeing, and it, it is very much form fitting to the needs of the public. I think that things, comments that you make and other, um, influences, influencers, um, they're taking that stuff on board. Um, I think that they're very much a committee that listens and it's, it's, I mean, in my experience, and after meeting Richard Hoffman and having a um, an interaction with him, I can tell that he is somebody that absolutely is very fluid with these concepts and, and understands that there's no real decisive leader in this or real one correct voice. And, and I think that the fact is, is that they do have a very clear objective here, and it is to lend support to the narrative that this is real and anything that they can do to prove it out. I think is part of that, um, that objective and having Ryan Graves speaking for them um, and, you know, representing the fact that um, in, his ex in his experience, this is very real and it needs to be considered because it is part of our no. era. Ryan Graves is a right. Uh, and I, Paul, what an ass I am right now for cutting you off. I, oh, no, I apologize fine. on that. Please. You know, Ryan Graves is brilliant. Let's be honest. He's a former fighter pilot. He is now taking on the UAP stuff very, very seriously. Built a company around it. Great. Okay. What's Ryan Graves, though? Military. 
Yeah. If if the SCU wants to be successful in this, they can't go Galileo. Galileo, in my opinion, is completely tainted with scientists who are who are um, attached to the government, attached to alphabet agencies, attached to military organizations, yeah. people who aren't scientists. Okay, that's no, Galileo. You're right. Yep. SCU has to stay straight and narrow. They need a proper press. Uh, uh, people who know how to write a press release, who know how to email a press release to the major media outlets because they haven't had any coverage throughout this entire phenomena on the news the last five years. And I blame yeah. their PR person for that, who once again is posing as a journalist and is not a journalist. Okay. And I brought that point up to board members too. I said, would you hire would you hire a a a golf cart mechanic to cook you breakfast in bed if you're at an exclusive restaurant or at an exclusive hotel? Yeah. No. But he plays one at home. Right. He plays a chef at home. No, I What's like what you're saying because okay. it's important to disseminate that information. Uh, no, and, and look, I'm not putting the blame on one person. Yeah, this is an entire board that wanted to stay quiet. Now they want to get loud. They don't know how to get loud. I've tried explaining it to them how to make it loud. I even volunteered my time to do it. Okay. And no, this isn't sour grapes or anything like that. Because frankly, I don't have time for much. I barely have time to uh, enjoy my own life. You know that, Tim, <laughs> you know, but yeah. But the whole point that I'm saying is this. If you're going to do it right, do it right. There's nobody questioning the SCU's brains or the, what their study says. These people are brilliant. They are. They're educated. They have worked in places and seen things and, and have, uh, that the majority of us will never, ever see. But we need the SCU to be on our team. T and I don't know if they fully understand what that means, Tim. I don't think they right. do. And they might come out and say, look, we're on everybody's team, which is the progressive way of doing things. We don't need that. This goes back to what I was saying in the last half hour, where I feel really troubled by the UFO world right now. Who is on our team? Who is on our team, Tim? We think Lou Elizondo is on our team, right. but he works for Space Force. We think Travis Taylor is on our team, but he works for Space Force. We think other people are on our team, but guess what? They're all tied to the alphabet agencies. Who is on our team to allow us as the public to have accountability? Because you know what? Right now, even with Ryan Graves involved with them, Guess what? The only videos that matter and the only experiencers that matter are whom, Tim? I don't know. You Come answer on, for you me. can dig in deep. You the can individual, dig in deep. The individual experiencer. The, the, no, oh. the military. The military. The military eyewitnesses. Those are the only eyewitnesses that count right now are I military eyewitnesses and civilian pilots. So what you're doing and what you're putting your uh, amazing time into, Tim, does not matter to the SCU. Right. Does not matter. What we do on this show does not matter to the SCU. It should because they need to be our voice. They need to be. Right. And. They don't know how to get there. They because they have a few people on there who who have no problem saying they're better than us. Okay, and they they are wanting to go down this government nuts and bolts that doesn't prove anything, and it's it, it's going to be a crap show and a failure when it doesn't have to be. Doesn't matter how much good stuff you put out. Anyways, I'm rambling. You go ahead. Well, no, no. I mean, I, I absolutely understand 
where you're positioned. Um, the thing is they're really attempting transparency and they're, you know, really trying to remain unbiased. They do show their work. They are looking to present, but let's consider this. It was a little bit hard to watch Richard Hoffman have to start off his presentation by explaining that these are their first round of results and that he already knows that skeptics are going to tear it apart. These are brilliant minds that are very tentative putting a toe in this water because of how it's already just such a hot topic, how, you know, you, it's really hard to present any data without it being just shredded by the piranhas in the water that you drop it in. And so here are some people that are trying to, trying to take a real serious look at this. And they are, believe it on, or not, on our side. They are looking to um, find some evidence of something that is very elusive, right? And so the first five minutes of the presentation from SU is explaining that none of this is definitive. We are open to people's scrutiny and we're open to other results. This is our first round of results. They shouldn't have to even explain that. It's, it's a shame that this topic yields that kind of sensibility, even from our top scientists. It shouldn't be like that. They should be very comfortable presenting. And I found that a little upsetting. Now, here, that's just me. And that was the first round. And this is a very young company that we're seeing. I would love to see better PR coming in the next year. You know, I would also like to see them taking on more programs that are independent, like myself, which they are because I've already arranged for these sorts of things. But I can see that this is a company that is literally just a blob that's been thrown in the air. And each time it comes down, it's going to look a little different. So I encourage you to keep an open mind, but I do understand your skepticism. We've been burned in the past. But again, this is a refreshing change. And I would love you to consider the fact that we do have people working tirelessly to get some details that we can actually call provable evidence because it's the one thing in this field we lack is real proof and evidence and that's what they're bringing so please dive into the videos that they've presented let you know, let your mind wander if you need to reserve uh you know an opinion until the end go for it but um there's a lot of detail a lot of it, of um you know data there so try to just get through it. But I, I do feel that this is a path in the absolute right direction. We need more independent researchers on this, Dave. I know you may not agree, but the only way forward for me, I, I'm not that concerned about sharing the results that I personally get, you know, um, but I, I, I don't mean that that way. I, I mean, like, it's important that we remain focused on the, like they're not so concerned with PR because the important facts are the numbers. They're focused on the data. You know what I mean? And I kind of understand that. I'm very focused on that too. I, I understand with what you're getting at, but I will say this to the thousands of people who are going to listen to this show, the data means nothing. The data means nothing. And I'm not saying that to be a jerk. Okay, and we could continue that when, when we come back. Okay, but these people want results. They want answers to what we're seeing in the sky. Okay, numbers and figures aren't going to do that. People working for them, understanding what they're about, like Dr. Uh, Edgar Mitchell's free experiencers, that's what they want. They want those results. Tim will agree to disagree on that, my friend. That's why I love you, is we can always have a good, candid conversation about things like that. We got Mr. Ron Bumblefoot Thaw rocking in the background with Little Brother is watching. Bumblefoot is the official music of Spaced Out Radio, rocking us in and out of every single show. Get your horns up for the guitar god himself. Special thanks to everybody listening in at home, at work, in your cars, wherever you may be. Thank you to everyone in our chat rooms tonight on Spreaker, YouTube, Twitch, LGAP, Facebook, the Space Travelers Club, and on Twitter at hashtag Spaced Out Radio. I know you're out there somewhere. Remember, this show is copyright by Spaced Out Radio and SOR Media Ventures Limited. 
thank you so much for choosing to share your evening with us. Because together, my friends, we're watching. We own the night. Mr. Bumblefoot, we need a favor. We need you to take us home. Yes, the Wu train has docked for the night. But soon, my friends, we shall ride again. Your seats are always available. Your tickets never expire. And if you want to bring a friend, we've got room for them, too. Good night. Gee, Tim, I hope I didn't sound too much of an asshole <laughs> when I said that like that. I, I hope I didn't. Uh, that that it's wasn't my Buddy, no, but that wasn't my that wasn't my purview to do that. And I, I and I apologize for that. Man, I love your opinion. I, you know, you would expect most people to be thrilled, and the fact that you're not allows me to dig a little deeper into why I am. You know, and so your opinion is probably a very popular one. And so for me to try to rebut it is uh, a lot of fun. I have no problem with it. You're great, buddy. Don't change a thing. Well, yeah. you know what? I uh, These are good people. They like are. These people who are tuned, who are tuned in right now, they're good people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And a lot of them have had major experiences that they cannot figure out or understand or have affected their lives. Okay. To the point where they have troubles going to sleep at night. Okay. Mm -hmm. And unless you've been in those shoes where you're woken up in the middle of the night by some extraterrestrial presence. Okay. And you feel your body being, uh, being taken away. You, you never understand. Yeah. And the problem with the SCU is the majority of them don't understand. They don't understand the entire concept. They can sit there and say they do with the numbers and, and everything like that. But this isn't about numbers for the field. Okay. Now I could be totally wrong here, Tim. I really could because I'm speaking out of passion. I'm not speaking out of out of uh, scientific knowledge, okay? But the one thing I do know, whether it's myself or whether it's um, it's uh, anybody in our audience, we're done with dots. We're yeah. done with we're done with some scientist telling us it's friggin' swamp gas or or uh, lights in the ocean that are reflecting, right? We know what we saw. We're not stupid. And when people like me and people like our audience, they're tired of being treated like we are stupid. Yeah. And that's what it comes down to, Tim. Right. And the SCU and members of the SCU, because I've talked to them, they don't understand. They're more interested in the scientific aspect of the phenomena, like you are, which is fantastic. We need that. Okay, but the question is, and if I was to interview or to speak in front of the SCU, the question I would ask them point blank is, whose team are you on? Whose team are you on? Could I ask if you were a member of SCU, how or even a director, how would you direct them to support what you need? Well, you do need, trust me when I say this, okay? Now it's going to sound like I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth. You do need the data that people like you are supplying. You need that, okay? But you have to be able to take it one step further. You have to guarantee the public that this is for them. It's not for private study. It's not for university study. It's not for governmental study. Okay, look, remember, 
when, when this all started, Tom DeLonge, try, who, who believes that this is all evil, that these are demons, okay, and his, and his trusting belief in Peter Lavenda that this is all satanic, okay? Yeah. He, he tried to buy the free experiencer statistics prior to the To the Stars Academy going public. Now, the free experiencer statistics show that over 80% of all experiencers had a positive experience. If a guy believes that this is all satanic, why would he want to buy those stats? To cover them up. Okay? And thank God Ray Hernandez and the rest of the of the the team there were smart enough to catch on to that. They knew that those experiences were going down the toilet. Right. If they if they accepted that check. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But that's I mean, where it all started. The public. It, it, how does the public? So let's go back here for a second, Tim. And I'm just rambling here. I apologize, bud. Okay. How does how does the public trust any scientist in this field? Like you said, Rich Hoffman, who is a great guy. He's a fantastic dude. One of the nicest people I've met in this field. Okay. When he has to start off his speech by saying, hey, we know we're going to take a little bit of heat for this. Okay. That's not fair. Yeah. It really isn't. But here's the thing. The UFO public is used to being screwed over, especially recently, by scientists and people they trust. And then finding out that they're part of an alphabet agency or military. Right, right. Okay. If I, you know, that's like me telling you a secret, Tim. And then you telling me, yeah, I'm going to keep that quiet or yeah, I'm going to help you out. But then you go blab it to your government agencies. Yeah. You make me think of a great quote from Woody Allen where he said, I would never join a club that would have me as a member. And I think that rings true here, Dave. Like, you wouldn't want to join SCU because they would have you as a member. <laughs> like any, any club no, that would I, have me as a member, I am not I joining. would love to join. Look, I don't <laughs> have all the answers. I don't have all the answers. But the one thing that if I was part of SCU, as a true member of the media, not the fake one that they have, okay, the first thing that I would be doing is straightening out that media department. I would explain to the team and the board of directors the importance of our job. But, but I would need, in order to do that job, I would need to know what is their focus? What is the focus of it all? Yeah. Okay. Is it just about dots? Is it about crash retrievals? Is it about teaming up with Galileo or some other infiltrated organization? What's it about? Right. And, and then we move from there. Right? Then we move from there. And if there are no answers, then I don't become a member. But if they want my help, okay, which they have to prove to me, that they are there for John and Jill Q public who has the videos of like you do, Tim, who has the experiences, who has their doorbell cameras getting lit up at night. And all of a sudden when they find out uh, they got missing time. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot of shit going on that doesn't get covered by dots. So what are they covering? Are they there to be the scientists of the people or are they there for their own greed? 
Yeah. And, and so I definitely encourage you just to watch all those videos. They just recently released with their current data and information and um, they propose all of their objectives and they tell you very clearly what they've been doing and who those people are that have been working on those projects. They're doing some really interesting things um, that, I mean, everybody would be interested in. Um, their transparency shows me that it is for me. Um, they get back to me instantly with information. Um, it's a two-way street. And so, I mean, they are proposing to be for us, for you, for me, for your viewers. And so far, they've demonstrated just that. And so I understand your skepticism and you haven't seen perhaps all of the videos that they just recently released, because I think you may see some change. You may see some ideas on where they're going to be by this time next year. And they've definitely made leaps and bounds from where they so. where when they started. They have videos, they have breakdowns in this most recent release. Um, and I they think have, that's great. Yeah. And in fact, they have a great piece of new information. So you said there's nothing new. Here's some brand new information I guarantee you've never heard before. They have a hundred, over a hundred specific descriptions and breakdowns of different forms of the phenomenon that they have evidence of, evidence and data on, over a hundred. And so this is brand new. Um, they have descriptors and they have things that they're detecting. So let's say, for example, UAP demonstrates this kind of activity in the sky and it demonstrates this wavelength in, co in color. They are assigning that now a number, you know, a numerical assignment. And with that, they are able now to kind of collate UAP into categories, if you will. And there's over a hundred different categories that they're working within to help them try and break down some of the things that we are seeing because they're not all just dots in the skies at all. And obviously Gary Nolan is working heavily on the experiencer side of this. And by no means don't think that he's not interacting with SCU because he absolutely is. And others doing work like Gary Nolan, just because he's the most vocal doesn't mean he's the only, and there are people within the coalition you haven't heard their name yet, but they're doing the same sort of work. So, I, I mean, I, I encourage you to just totally sink yourself into it if you're really interested, because there is quite a lot of activity taking place there, and their transparency demonstrates that it is for us. So, well, um, and I agree with you, and I agree with you. I think it's great. Okay, and yes, I do have to look at them. You know, I really do. Stay open-minded. Just maybe they'll do and I'm what willing we hope. To be open -minded yeah, because I, I want to see SCU succeed. Me too. I do. Okay, but once again, teaming up with certain scientists who are working for certain alphabet agencies does the public no good. Okay, and yeah. if this, and here's the other thing: if these statistics were so mind-blowing and moving why aren't they on in the news okay because they have a dimwit working as their uh pr person who's never worked in journalism and and i also feel that you know this topic is working against them you can push this out into the public purview but they may not receive it just because it's not being picked up by the media may mean that this is like in that we're, we're in the ebb stage are right you now. Like, are you telling me, hold on a second here. They wouldn't necessarily pick this story up Mi because it's not. Mr. Fox, Mr. Fox News. Okay. The one I want to punch in the face, Tucker Carlson, who will do anything on UFOs right now because he knows his rating spike. He would eat this up, but the PR person doesn't have any connections to the mainstream media. You would think that someone who lies about their credentials yeah. would uh, would have connections outside of putting together uh, a UFO conference. I said yeah. to one of the board members one day, I said, you guys are all pretty brilliant. I said, why don't you check the resume? Right. 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 Um, 
and you've got YJ in your chat, and he's just saying that we just need the bodies and the craft at this point. He he's ready. He's like you. He's had yeah. over a decade of this, and he's ready for the next step. And um, quite honestly, I think that that I mean, we kind of are at that stage. I mean, with this topic, it wouldn't blow the public's mind to receive this information. I do feel like we're ready for the truth and, and have been, um, you know, for quite some time now. And, um, you know, I like kind of what Kevin Day had said, where he, this needs to be taught in schools. You know, there's a whole alternate history that needs to be softly and gently given to us without it um, disrupting anyone's foundation and core beliefs. But, um, I mean, the shift needs to happen. And the fact is that we're not seeing it just shows how massive it is and how they're really not, you know, we're going to have to pull teeth if we're going to take that step at this point, because boy, have they just shut down this topic. Well, yeah, but that's, but here's the thing. If the SCU continues to grow and doesn't monitor themselves properly. Okay. They'll get that infiltrated. could happen to them too. Yeah very easily if they're not monitoring who is joining their group if they're not monitoring where they come from where are they working this could happen to them too great point okay so that's why i said right off the bat from an objective point of view who is the scu working for i see are they working mean, for yeah. the public or are they working for other reasons right Right. And um, I know we're going to have a public interview with Bob Lazar coming up here soon. And sure enough, who's going to be sitting in there with him, but Richard Doty. And you're like, why? What? Why? I hear you. <laughs> why does I'll, that I'll, have to be? I'm taking a quick break here. I got to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. I want to continue this. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll stay if, up with you a little longer. Going, if you got to get going, that's fine too. Um, I'll stick with round for another uh, 15 minutes. For okay, sure. Cool. I'll just say hi to everyone in your chat. I definitely um, have time for that. I've got chat up here. So I'm seeing Thurston didn't actually go to bed. He's still up. But um, yeah, Lazar, I know, right? Um, what a character. Um, but uh, yeah, it's definitely interesting times. You don't want to be taking your information from people that you know have worked for the CIA you know, or any government agency for that matter. You're not trying to get new information from those people. Absolutely not. Um, and so the Lazar interview is going to be on Kurt Jamungle's theory of everything a week or two from now. Y you can check TOE, but uh, Kurt Jamungle, I believe um, three people are going to be in on that interview, not just Bob. I'm forgetting the th third yeah, Richard Doty, Bob Lazar, and I can't remember the third, but it's going to be great. So, um, yeah. Right, YJ, you're absolutely right. Western culture being under attack and ufology is just one more brick in that wall. It's not about ufology. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Um. And so dark protocol, you're saying the problem with public groups are just there to make entertainment, tear in the sky. I saw more of William Shatner's face than the actual UAP captures in that doc. Underwhelming. Totally fair. Um, absolutely fair statement. I, I would have loved more uh, video. And it's unfortunate that the only good capture happened with, a, I believe, a, ca uh, a cell phone capture through either a telescope or a binocular. Obviously, they had the, the UAP DAP system that captured the tear in the sky itself. But yeah, I can agree with you on that. They, they, the next one, I think, will be better. I know they're definitely in process there. So, But we're seeing Ye and Sarah Yon. Cat Chaser stayed up a little later with us. It's probably, what, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning for Cat Chaser. Let's see. World Bigfoot Radio, what's up? Oh, he's talking to Cat. Okay. But let's see what else here. 
Um, oh yeah, uh, Steam Train Mark, right on. The video presentation with John Alexander is really good. Uh, the presentation from, uh, yeah, that was that was excellent. And then let's see what else we have here. Penny Van, what's up? The ocean's deep woo, you're still here <laughs> with your eyes closed. Jenny White Bear is out there. Good evening. Joe Monk, what's up? And David Lyle is thanking Dave for sticking up for experiencers. He says, I could film a sharp swimming by and no one would blink an eye. If I post a large white orb going right over my head with no sound, then here comes the drama. You're so right. It is a strange community. We should be united in every way and supporting each other. I 100% agree with that sentiment and can relate. Being somebody new to this, if there wasn't a community like you guys, I wouldn't be here. The fact that you're welcoming, and my sighting wasn't massive. It impacted me and my family massively, but compared to what I've learned as other people's experiences, yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot going on out there, and it's incredible. And I can't believe that people live their day-to-day -day lives with this knowledge, Dave included for that matter. That is the biggest mind blower for me is that people have this knowledge and they're able to still go shopping, take care of their kids, do their job and maintain sanity. That's, that's tough. That's gotta be a, a big wow. You know, you know that's I a, was go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. No, no. I was just going to ask you like how you find that balance. Night, I come to this show. I'm going to open up here for a second. Please. I, I come to this show each and every night bothered by what I am seeing in the UFO world. Bothered by what I can't get out. There are so many behind the scenes conversations going on that if the public really knew about those conversations, they would be just as frustrated as I am about everything. It's to the point now where in some of the private groups I'm in, I don't even pay attention to them anymore because it's useless. They don't want to hear. They don't want to know. Right. And to try and transcribe that to an audience that is just wanting to know what the truth is, Tim, it's hard. It's difficult. Okay. It's difficult knowing that there are answers out there of crash retrievals, of alien bodies going on behind the scenes. And nobody wants to talk about it publicly. It's hard to, it's hard to look our audience in the eyes. And this is why we're kind of focusing more on the experiential side of everything, because the one thing the scientific community and even the military side refuses to delve into with this is how many people are hurting over this topic. None of us asked for this, Tim. There's not a single experiencer out there who's experienced things from childhood right to wh whatever age they are now who asked for this. Okay? And the only thing that the majority of these people want, myself included, is to know why. But instead, the scientific community treats us like crap. The public community treats us like laughing stocks. 
the the uh, the people who we think are are on our side are not on our side, and yet there are people out there, whether they call themselves UFO activists or or researchers or writers or authors, they don't give two shits about what we're going through because the majority of them who are in this topic have never experienced what it's like to be traumatized by a UFO landing on the ground or having an alien gray stare at you while you're lying in bed. They don't know that feeling. They don't know the fear of paralysis that you get when they're around. What it's like to be absolutely petrified, Tim, to know that you are lying awake in bed on your side and you know behind you there is a creature standing there and you're too afraid to turn and look. I've had that happen about five times. They don't know what it's like to to sit there and feel that gravitational pull when you're yelling at them, no, I don't want to go today, and they don't care. They being the aliens. They don't know. They don't care. And the experiencer is left all alone trying to put these puzzle pieces together because nobody gives a shit about them. We want dots. We want we want technology. We want to know how their propulsion systems work. How did they get here? Okay? For the experiencer, we already know. But the scientific community outside of very few like Gary Nolan are actually tapping our brains to figure out what it's like. Okay. The military side just wants it for them. Go ahead, Tim. What would be a, a, a positive end game for an experiencer like yourself? What, what could happen? Are you looking for an explanation? Are you looking for it to stop? Are you looking for the public to know and accept it massively? Or I mean, you're not waiting for government disclosure. Obviously, none of it, none of us are um, necessarily. But um, what is an ideal end game for someone in your position? How could this topic be broached, or or what would you like to see happen with this topic? I'll just leave it at well, that. Well, like I said, I would love to see the SCU. Uh, excuse me. I got something in my eye. Okay. I would love to see a group like the SCU. Okay. Tell us they're working for us. I mean, you look, buddy, we have caught NASA lying. Red handed. If this was any other news topic outside of aliens NASA would be busted for it okay they would be busted for it but because it's aliens they're not busted how many other shows have you listened to or are public listened to where they have literally bent over backwards to come out and show you how NASA is lying. Right? The public needs people to speak for them, not assume what's going on, but to speak the public's truth. Why are we experiencing this? Why was I taken? Why is my child being taken and I can't stop it? I can't protect my child. How would you like it? You got four kids. How would you like it if one of your children came up to you and said, Daddy, I'm, I think I'm being taken at night. How would you react? 
Yeah. You you would be Tim, I guarantee you, you would be scared because once your child tells you what they've experienced and knowing as a parent you cannot protect your child from this. It's eerie. Okay. It's downright scary. Mm -hmm. All right. But nobody wants to work with the public. The biggest embarrassment the scientific community has with the field of ufology is people like me. Okay. I don't give a shit about how a craft can go from 80,000 feet to above 10, above 10 feet above sea level in 0.78 seconds, like Kevin Day says. It's impressive. Makes me say, wow. But it doesn't affect me whatsoever. Do you feel like this will soften the public, though, for the truth that you have? Like, don't you feel like we need to make steps? Before they're hit with the, I mean, let's be honest, the scary truth of what a lot of experiencers are going but through. If, but it's not just about that. That's that's the collaboration of it all. For the time being, we need to at least have a community of scientists who come out and say, these people are real. These experiencers are real. Like Gary Nolan has tried to do, but it got swept under the under the rug. Mm -hmm. okay we need the scu not to worry about about dots and about videos okay there's millions of videos out there you just have to go on youtube or tiktok okay so you're saying All research people. more in experiencers get close to experiencers and and get their story and perhaps medically research them research them Research the people. Okay. There's a, if you have an idea, what about there's dozens of people that Grant Cameron has interviewed who claim that they have, have uh, flown the craft. Yeah. Okay. I talked to a 12 year old girl. She's probably 16 now. Okay. I talked to a 12 year old girl who flew the craft. I said, how did you do it? She goes, I don't know. I just sat in the chair and it went wherever I asked it to go. I want to do that. Okay. That and great. this is why I've told people, go back and watch the Disney movie Flight of the Navigator. Great movie. That movie is completely ahead of its time from 1986 to what we are talking about right now. Okay. A child flying a craft with missing time, years of missing time. Okay. And the problem is we want to politicize this topic. We need the SEU not to be politicized. We need the SEU to be working for the, the proper um, information that we can get out of them to figure out everything. It's not just about the technology. It's about where are these coming from? Are they coming from inner earth? Are they coming from outer space? Are they time travelers coming from different dimensions? Dark protocol. The What's evidence? What's proof? Okay. Answer me the question. What is proof? Okay, there's plenty of evidence, plenty of evidence. Yeah, empirical okay. data exists. There is definitely. There is thousands of pieces of evidence. Yeah. Granted, it's most of it is anecdotal. Okay, but guess what? Anecdotal evidence holds up in a court of law as an eyewitness. Yeah. And nine, and, and nine times out of ten or 99 times out of 100, that evidence is good enough to put a murderer away or a Bingo. thief away or whatever. Yeah, They don't have the proof of a camera or a videotape. And if you do have the proof of a videotape or a camera, nobody believes you in today's day and age anyways. Yeah. 
I mean, the, <coughs> the work of John Mack and others like him are, are, are available, but you can see that these experiences were not from people that were on medication, drinking, on drugs, out of any kind of normal lifestyle. These were absolutely everyday people. And 99.9% .9 I think of experiences experiencers are. You know, they're not disillusioned right. um, mental patients. Right. Right. These are just uh, regular people. I, I've explained this story on our show a number of times. I woke up with scratches on my back. I said to myself and my partner, I need to take a picture of this. I remembered four hours later. I go back, I look in the mirror, the scratches are gone. There's not even any scarring. They vanished, they disappeared. And these things were bright red. Okay. I wanted to take photos of them and I forgot. Why did I forget? Oh boy. Well, yeah. I know exactly okay. what you're talking about. Like That's I literally, I literally, I looked in the mirror. Okay. This is exactly what happened. I looked in the mirror. My, my partner said to me, she says, what's that about? I said, I don't know. You better photo. We better photograph it. Right. Because it was stuttering scratches like a cat, about four inches long. If my cat, one of my cats would have scratched me, I would have remembered. Yeah. Okay. Because I would have screamed. They were long. They were four inches long hmm. each. And they were like stuttering like a cat's. Okay. Mm -hmm. And by the time I saw it in the mirror, I said, well, I'm going to take a piss. I walked over to my bath my my uh my toilet stood there took a piss and 4 hours later i remembered about it and when i called my partner in to look at those scratches on my back that were now gone she did not remember no it's not good stories see this is where why are you in this field dark protocol if you're not willing to accept uh the evidence okay the chicken shit way out is good stories that's the chicken shit way out of this and yes i am worked up about it you okay? lived it i mean it's understandable it. and there's an I intense psychology that that goes along with this and the fact that parts of it you're forgetting and then remembering um that's got to be frustrating um, and I'm sure you're not alone in that. I'm that is a very common thing um, for people that interact yeah. with the phenomenon like and, you. Have. That you know, uh, it's it's comments like that. The reason why this field will never move forward, because somebody like Dark Protocol, there is not a piece of evidence that will ever be good enough for them. If it's a video, it's doctored. If it's a photograph, it's photoshopped. If it's, if it's lights way far away, that's a constellation, part of a constellation because right. there's triangles right. all over the sky. Okay. Right. And right. that's the problem we have. There is no such thing as proof. There is no such thing as evidence. Yeah. There you is you made a great point earlier. Experiencers do not choose this. It's not career enhancing. Dave's not here for his health benefits. He's here because it is a gnawing part of his life that he's trying to share. So the quote unquote stories that you're hearing are something that he had to live. You know, and I, I don't mean that to demean what you've gone through or to, you know, shorten that up, but. I think it's important to initialize the fact that this is a reality to you and the fact that it's Absolutely. hard for me to understand Fine. and to even imagine and, and dark protocol is having a hard time accepting that as a reality just, just proves exactly what you're saying that it is Absolutely. so hard to even, cause I'm sure dark protocol is a sweet person, right? And Probably. a genuinely awesome open-minded person, but this is such a massively, it's it's big. It, it is such a big reality to have to wrap your head around. And a big Prove part me. of me, 
big part of me doesn't want to believe you, Dave, because it's terrifying. Like it would be much easier to be like, man, that was, whoa, wow, what that's a, a good story. story. That, that's Dave's that's reality. Story. And to Dave, he believes it. Here's the but thing. Here's I can't thing, demean buddy. your story by just doing that. I, I Here, yeah. Here's the thing. Do you think I want to be doing this show? Right. I got bit. Look, yes, SOR has become a business. Okay. We don't make a ton of money. Nope. We don't. You know that. You've <laughs> yeah. you've you've seen the numbers. Yeah. We don't make a ton of money. That's not why we're here. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. I could be spending each and every night doing a little bit more important things, like putting my son to bed. Help it like tonight, right before I went in studio. I was I have this little hockey board, okay, because he loves hockey. Loves yeah. playing hockey. And I was teaching him a few things on the board, like during a game, where to stand, where to be. I would sooner be doing that. I would sooner be on, on you know, we're getting close to Christmas. I don't like wrapping Christmas presents at one o'clock in the morning. I would like to be hanging out with my family, wrapping Christmas presents at seven o'clock at night, eight o'clock at night. Nine o'clock at night. That's what I would said. Uh, hold on. He goes, yeah, you said yourself if the government paid you off, you would take it and leave. We get it. We all have to make that mortgage. Dude, I wouldn't a second. Hey, that's been a popular question lately. If the government paid you the money, okay, or, or, or was going to give you all the answers, would you walk away? Absolutely. No problem with that. I think so everyone would. Sure. You're not, I, I'm not every sure. one of us would do that. That's not an yeah. unpopular but choice. You, but you see, here's what we're going through, Tim. How yeah. many times have you heard me say we, we get people who look for those aha gotcha moments? Yeah. That's what we're yeah. that's what we're dealing with right here is an aha gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so, potentially. I, I mean, but here, you know, here's the thing. You at the same rate, Dave, and I'm not sticking up for anyone here, but this is a tough subject, man. And so for someone to be like, yeah, I had an alien experience to someone that it has only heard nutters say that it's, it's too hard. You it's don't know hard. if they're nutters, but here's the thing. How I know, you, I know, but I'm just saying nutters very generally because you know, that's Agreed. the way it's been interpreted okay. up until this point. And so by no means am I saying that I feel I'm saying nutters as you know, one of those terms that we've been all called because and I'm there too. Look, I'm on your show. So no, dude. I hey, yeah, that's a great yeah. point. Yeah, that's a great point. Okay, but think about this, dude. How many people were locked away in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s into loony bins because they were being chased by aliens and right. they may not have been psychotic? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, they may not have been. Right. We don't know. We'll never know. Okay. Thanks to the internet, we're allowed to express these feelings. And like I said, I have better thing in reality. I have better things to do with my time than to, than to play radio five nights a week. And open yourself up to this. Absolutely. You, know, you are a very honest and genuine person. And you started this out after you came back from the restroom by saying, I'm going to get very personal. That's not something that somebody does when they're about to lend you a line of bullshit. This is, this is something that's hard to talk it about. Hurts, dude. And it you're hurts. not out here looking to be scrutinized by the public. You're out here just to talk about a topic that's real. Absolutely. And that's Look, it. I'm going to have, I'm going to have critics like dark protocol. I'm okay with that. That's yeah. why I let him say, you know, he's in it's our chat hard. room. Yeah. It, it's, he's it's not hurting topic. anybody being here. Yeah. He's not and hurting it, anybody. Being he's here. also not alone in having exactly. your, your experiences and my experience with all this being hard to take. And, and, you know, even my minor experience with my family and I say minor because the general public may see it as minor. It wasn't to me, but my, my point is that it's up to the person and their interpretation to an outsider. My story and what happened to me is probably like, man, it was just up in the sky. What are you worried about? But to me, it changed my whole life and my career. It wasn't career enhancing. It wasn't something that I wanted to spend a lot of my time on. It was nothing I'd ever thought about before that day ever. 
and mm -hmm. and to be honest i would feel like dark protocol potentially if i was in your chat meeting you for the first time and hearing that Absolutely. i'd be like wow what a story i might be open to it but i would call it a story and i wouldn't call it an experience because i hadn't gotten there yet and and you have to suspend your disbelief in this field or you're going to get nowhere because the fact is it's tapping into consciousness and that is something that is extremely hard to even grasp mm -hmm. you know so if if Go ahead, because I see you. A couple ready comments here. Uh, Von Patrick saying, uh, Dave, I've seen it firsthand. There is a thought that mentally ill people are actually normal, and we without a diagnosis are ill. You know, that's a strong comment right there. Yeah. Uh, uh, David Lyle, we have to speak out. The ETs have chosen us. We have to talk about it. When you are a fighter, you fight back. Not going to be silent. Good you for know, you for saying that. Pam closed-minded people aren't capable of seeing the truth they don't want to you know yeah it's not easy you know, attaching I mean, your name and your face to something like this either and talking about something that's fringe it's not easy none of us really want to publicly be torn up you know on something like this but at the same rate it's compelling and the fact is it's absolutely 100% real to the people that have experienced it. And so for someone to come in and be like, oh, it's just a story, that just negates the whole experience. And you're missing out on a lot of important experiencers' information. Exactly. But and it's when, unfortunate but, for you. But when the scientific community, which everybody seems to be leaning towards the, the last couple of years, negates a giant part of what is happening in the UFO world, whether they feel we're ready for that or not. Okay. It's like saying, telling a part of the public, you're not allowed to vote for whatever reason. Yeah. And so okay. what I'm hearing you say very clearly is that in organizations like SCU, there needs to be at least a department of it or something Common that ground. is looking Common into. Ground. Yeah. That makes absolute sense. Okay. That makes We're not, sense. Look, experiencers aren't asking for the world. Right. Okay. And every experiencer asks for something different. But the one thing we all have in common is we just want to know why me? That's it. Yeah. Why me? And the scientific community doesn't want to go for the most part does not want to go down that road of thinking yet because it's too hard to study. Right. Okay. And can it's I just too reiterate difficult to bring credibility to it? Experiences are very personal and real to that individual too. And so it doesn't matter what any skeptic says that's that's your reality and absolutely your truth yeah. and so absolutely like, the fact that you answered the that question that of course i would do anything for the truth i would sell out you'd never see me again if i was given the truth well yeah. you got into this for that i got into this for that if i like if i had gotten the truth the day after my experience you and i never would have met Right. Yeah. If someone had handed me a check and said, Tim, stop looking for the truth. And if you find it, don't tell. Now, that might not be a check I would take because I if can't Canadian, stop looking. <laughs> right. If the Canadian government came up to me tomorrow and said, we're going to hire you to be on our woo desk. This is your salary. This is your pension. This is what we need you to do. But you got to give up your radio show. Oh, yeah. How could you not? You get to run, be a part of the woo desk, man. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, that, that would be a big decision for me, but I can guarantee you, I know which way I'm going because I want answers. Yeah. And maybe that influence of somebody like me, uh, hypothetically, of course, maybe that influence could open up the doors to further study and opening up the fuller disclosure era. Yeah, which is exactly why you'd never get the job. <laughs> exactly. You're too progressive. Exactly. But yeah. But the I, I guess what I'm saying is, and, and uh somebody said it here really well. Penny said it well. No one has the right to tell another their experiences are crazy. Okay. Look, I have experienced some weird ass shit over the last eleven years. And like I said, the majority of us experiencers 
have never asked for this. Whether it's hauntings, whether it's Sasquatch, whether it's out-of-body experiences, astral travel, aliens, ghosts, or whatever. We didn't ask for this. We've been brought into this. Okay? Yeah. And as soon as people start comprehending that this th that the experiencer is different from the experience. I know there's one former host out there going on, uh, you know, going around saying, I'm an experiencer too. I saw dots when I was 15 years old. It's not an experiencer. Right. You had an experience. You saw something. But you're not an experiencer. You have no idea what it's like to, to move it from one, the pendulum moving one day to the next. And more and more people, Tib, are coming out as multiple experiencers. Where it started off with paranormal, then it went to the cryptid world, then UFOs or something along that li line. Hold on, yeah. which is why y'all should join. Okay, so we know Dark Protocol is American because he used the word y'all. Um which is why y'all should join Space Force and work it from the inside. The fact that 90% would never pass the training still means there's a few inside. And that's a good comment. And Dark Protocol, I, I, I just want to say something to you. I've been pretty hard on you tonight, okay? But I, I do appreciate the other the, the other point of view. Yeah. I think this is this has been good conversation. And and you you bring a lot to the table and and the we need that okay we yeah. do need that and yeah. and that's that's why i haven't uh i haven't uh uh blocked you that's why we haven't timed you out or anything like that you have it number one you haven't deserved it but number two you know you're bringing you know questions that you have it's your choice whether or not you want to believe me or anybody, but I appreciate you you bringing that to the table. I yeah. do. I couldn't get hired by Space Force because I'm Canadian. That's why I have to go to the Canadian Woo desk when they finally make one. And trust me, I have talked to politicians about the Woo desk to try and sneak my way in there. I have. I wow. will. You know, but well. Anyways, uh, we're, we're about to go around in circles here, Tim. Yeah, no, absolutely. I was just going to say, we keep it unbiased. That's what the UFO uh, report absolutely. is all about. Thank but, you so uh, much for staying up later with me, Dave. It's always fun. And oh, your chat no, is I appreciate fantastic. you being here. I love, I yeah. love chatting this subject with you because you make me think, Tim, you get a lot out of me. You get a lot out of me. And uh, I appreciate that. I do. I do. It comes from hey, a big thank you love, tonight. my friend. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Big thank you tonight to Typical Skeptics, uh, Stephen, Tim, Samantha, Thomas, Deb, Surf, Jer, Kira, Cat Chaser, Deb again, and Monica for the super chats. Uh, thank you so much. Tomorrow night on the show, Varla Ventura comes in, and we are talking about our cryptid world. Wednesday, we have Dan Warren from TikTok UFO. Thursday, we have uh, Homer Hickam. The Rocket Boy yes. coming on in uh, to chat some uh, going back to the moon and rockets and going to Mars. It's going to be incredible. Friday is the round table, and uh, we'll have a lot of fun around that as well. It's going to be a great week here on Spaced Out Radio. Don't forget to do a little shopping at our store, spacedoutradio.com, and we will see you all tomorrow night. Timmy, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks, buddy. See ya. Later.